Are you interested in learning ways that you can motivate or empower your child as they begin a new school year, start a new chapter in their lives, or learn something for the first time? Well, check out these five confidence building activities that will get them started and continued on their path to success. Let's dive right in. Hello everyone, it's Dr. Z here with another video. If you're new to the channel, we welcome you. If you like what you see, like, subscribe, and click the bell, which will make sure that you receive future notifications of updated videos. Today's video is all about confidence building activities. It doesn't matter if you're a homeschool mom, you're homeschooling year round and getting ready for a new year of excitement, of, of energy, of challenges, of fun, of whatever is needed for your child, or whether you're a classroom teacher and you're looking to start off the year with a bang and want your students to be ready, motivated, and confident about the learning that they're getting ready to do. I'm going to share some tools that I hope will be beneficial to you. So for the month of August, we will be offering free downloads related to confidence building activities. And we want to make sure that you don't miss out on one of these. So be sure to click the description box below and click on free downloads where you will be able to, from one click, receive all of the downloads for the month and never again have to click the free downloads link. So be sure that you join our village so that you can make sure that you don't miss out on all of the great resources that we send out to you. Before we begin, let's look at the following three words, self-esteem, self-confidence, self-efficacy. You may have heard of one or more of these words used to describe self-confidence, but I think it's important to distinguish the three terms. Self-esteem is one's belief about oneself. It is an evaluation of your worth. So how one feels, whether positive or negative, about oneself. This would be similar to going to the movies and saying that a movie was good or bad. And usually there's some emotion that is associated with that belief. So if the movie is bad, maybe because it made you feel crappy. If it was a great movie, you were excited or happy about some scene. So in the same way, self-esteem is when we evaluate or judge our worth based on a positive or negative feeling. So while self-esteem is associated with feelings of self-worth, self-confidence and self-efficacy are usually words that are used interchangeably. But for the sake of not confusing you in this video, we're gonna keep it real simple. Self-confidence in general is a feeling of trust in one's ability. It's a positive belief that in the future, one can generally accomplish what one wishes to do. So I know that in my future, I'm gonna be successful. Uh, I'm going to have a good job. I make good decisions. It's a general trust in the fact that one has abilities and that those abilities are going to help them be successful. Self-efficacy is a specific type of self-confidence. It says that I have feelings of trust in my ability to accomplish this specific task. Maybe the task is cooking. Maybe the task is being able to being a good swimmer. Maybe the task is writing a book. Those are the specific tasks that I have trust in my ability to do based on having mastered something similar. So maybe I can join the swim team and I trust that I'm gonna make it on the swim team because I already was in a swim class where I was competing and I did well. So think about that for a second. The more opportunities I have to accomplish a particular task, the more self-efficacy or self-confidence I'm building in being able to accomplish other tasks that may be a greater challenge. We want to make sure that our students are building self-efficacy by giving them multiple opportunities to be successful at various different types of tasks. Newsflash, if all you heard in that last segment was no worries, because you have unlimited opportunities to rewind this video and go back over those three turns so that you can build trust in your ability to learn those words. So now that we have a common ground for talking about these three words, let's jump right into our first confidence building activity. Activity I'd like to share with you for building confidence in your students is something I have called the Superhero Action Tracker. And it's a nice little easy worksheet to pair well with a book that you may be reading in your class or with your child about some particular character trait, a valuable lesson, maybe it has a moral, or maybe there's some strength of character being exposed or explored in this particular book, and you want to draw attention to it. But this helps your child to be able to identify 
actionable ways that he or she is able to use a particular trait. So first we would get a book, and so it can be any book that you've gotten from the library or from your own collection. And this particular book was just a short little story about a dog. My son loves animals, so I know that I can pull books that relate to animals, exhibiting some sort of quality um, that can show him that he also can have that same quality. So this is God Gives Me Strength. It's about a little dog who is struggling with coming across water and he also prays and he asks for the strength to do it and it musters up the courage to get across the water. And so from reading a book like this, I then would have my son complete the worksheet by filling out the first part. This week I showed strength or courage by, and throughout the week we would be talking about this particular word in, in everyday life. But by the end of the week, your student can write and record the ways that they have used or shown courage. And this is a way for them to be able to connect a particular trait that they may not have known that they possess that works or builds their self-worth, but also to show how they use that skill. So then when that skill needs to be used in another area, in a new way to build confidence, you can recall and they can recall, remember when you use this skill here. So it's a way to help the student to be able to identify in it in a, in a real um, tangible way how that particular skill was used. So I'm thinking about my son. I remember one day he came to me, you know, mom, I think I don't want to use my nightlight anymore. I'm a very afraid. And so, you know, after my daughter used an encouraging um, scripture that she knew, we also were able to refer back to uh, the book that we had read and how the character displayed courage and how this was opportunity for him to. And he did it. And he was able to write that on his action tracker. For older students, you could simply have them use a writing journal and record the same information. Really, you're just wanting them to be able to think and reflect upon what are three ways that they use a particular skill, a particular quality or characteristic so that they can see it in themselves. Please also note that by signing up for our free downloads, this will be one of the downloads for the month of August. Activity number two for building self-confidence in students is to use daily affirmations. A self-affirmation is simply a statement you tell yourself in order to spark self-change. It is designed to alter our beliefs about ourselves, to bring them into a more positive life. So if you have a child that is struggling with um, the things they say about themselves, they look at uh, the glass half empty versus half full, it just seems like they're always negative about the things that come out, this would be a great activity because we're talking about altering beliefs. So we're talking about your self-worth, how you see yourself. And a daily affirmation can be used because it's the repetition that causes uh, the brain to be stretched and to believe and hold as true what it has taken in. So when you're using affirmation, studies have been done on this to show that even the same activity being used over a month period, that individuals who participated express um, a change in their mental well-being. So affirmations are really important in that sense. And you you can actually use the same action tracker from the last activity to help your child form uh, affirmations. So if I were going to be using Sage who did uh, that he wasn't afraid of the dark after showing courage, well courage or bravery was one of his traits. So he could say I am brave. Something as simple as that. And I want to show you some of the affirmations from my students, my superheroes as you will, that they have learned. Who are you? I'm Sage Ethan. I'm smart, I'm strong, I'm wise, I'm brave, I'm God's man. Who are you? I am the face of beauty made to create and to be to love, to give, to change the world. I am, I am the star. You can also use this for students in a classroom by having your class come up with a mantra or a statement that they say at the beginning of class to set the tone for class. And that's something I did to make sure that we were all on the same page and also that we were speaking things to ourselves to help us to reset ourselves from the last transition to the current. Activity number three for building confidence in students is to utilize a builder or inspirational jar. And I'm saying the jar, but it really can be anything. It can be a box, it can be something that you just put things in that you can store in a room and in a space where your children or your students know about it and they know how to get to it in order to inspire them, in order to build them up, in order to remind them of who they are. 
So here's an example of what an inspirational jar looks like. Now, remember you can use whatever you'd like. The main focus is on what is inside. And as you can see, these little scrolls, I just used plain paper. I printed it on a colored sheet and there is a statement on the inside and I just wrapped it in ribbon, um, something you can get for at the dollar store very easily. And I just put it in the jar. And these are statements that you can have your students write. You can start off by saying, what are some, some things or when you need to be um, motivated that you say to yourself or some inspirational quotes that you use you can have them to go um, and find one and bring it in you can take a moment and look at some from magazines and cut them out so you can be as creative as you like the whole focus though is to be able to take these to put them in a particular jar and house them somewhere so that in any moment your student can access it and in my classroom I would use these to just go ahead and put in what I had as a safety zone which is a place my students could go if they were just having a moment or needing a moment and they would grab one of these and they could unroll them and get a quote that either they came up with their classmate came up with or something they had read um, or what have you I find that through the years these have come a long way in helping to build confidence and helping to motivate the students to even get back on track and in helping them to just realize that we all have those moments and that's life Here's an example of a quote every person is on a journey where I am right now is not my final destination and this could help someone who is feeling stuck. Children go through and try to grapple with who they are and why am I here and what is going on with me. This would be a great way to just help them to work through and process. This is not the end. This is just one part of the journey. I primarily use these quotes or these inspiration jars with older students, high schoolers, and college students. I recently had one on her way to entering college to say that she opened all of hers and plastered them on her mirror so that she could wake up every day to them. So they really make an impact um, and I'm not all the way sure why I think they uh, resonate with with students uh, particularly if it's a quote that really is meaningful they also serve as great graduation presents and you know it's a gift that keeps on giving activity number four for helping your child to build confidence is to use a mirror it's what I call the mirror activity and this is specifically targeting building self-efficacy remember that is our trust in our abilities to complete successfully a particular task so sometimes as a, a teacher as a parent we may come from the the perspective that we know what our child has accomplished so we feel pretty confident about helping them to get to a particular place but it's very important for your child to know what they have accomplished it's very important for them to have a perspective and a perception on what it is that they have done in the past because if they're going to move on to more challenging and similar tasks they need to know also the confidence that they had in completing a task prior so this is an activity to help them think through that process and then to still get creative by using the mirror to display it. So let me show you what it looks like. So here you can see there is a brainstormer reflection worksheet. It's called, who do I see? And your child will answer questions about that very idea of what they see. What are three things you like to do without being asked? And so we know that if they're not being asked to do it, chances are it's a passion. Chances are it's something they do or they do well or something that they like to do. And so this is helping to frame what is that self-worth? What are those things that are the things that they see in themselves just right off the bat without having to do any work? The next question is, what is something you accomplished this year or this summer or this month? You can determine the how you frame the question that you're proud of. So looking at their own perception of their accomplishments so that the student can be able to voice it and to write it down and to know how they feel accomplished, okay? The next one is, what are three things you worked on this past school year? Which ones did you feel good about? So again, associating the emotion of where was your, your, your belief about yourself when it comes to something that you worked on this year. And then the next question, make a list of things that are important to you, your value systems and where you see things, how you position things, your priorities. And then finally, what are things you would like to learn how to do or to do better? We don't wanna only focus on strengths because if we're looking to build self-efficacy, we have to give our children opportunities to take risks, to make mistakes, to even fail, because the more opportunities they get, the more opportunities they have to make it well, to do better, to improve, to be successful, and to move on to more tasks. So after after you fill out this worksheet and as you can see this is mainly targeted for older students um, but of course you could tailor it to a young child by having the conversation as opposed to necessarily them recording it on paper 
But the next thing you want to do is to take those answers and to display it visually. They can use words, pictures, and, and formulate sort of a collage. It could look um, in any way that they would like for it to because it's somewhere that they should be able to hang this so that they can recall what they have accomplished. So then when they're doing a task that is similar, that may seem more challenging, they can call upon the skills, what it felt like to accomplish it, how they got through it, what was important about it, to how they can now apply that to this new situation again you're building self-efficacy this is an example of what it can look like in the end and this is one I pulled I think from an old a student or something but you can see things that they're good at it says I like to invent things maybe hard for you to see it from here but um, the idea that they worked on uh, dealing with fear and insecurity some of the words or the things that uh, they accomplished was um, or they think they do well is singing being able to publicly speak what's important family okay so you can just get a sense of what it could look like but you want your child to essentially be as creative as possible in determining um, how they want to display it because it's something that they will look at in the future our final activity activity number five is love notes and this is one that is near and dear to my heart because I can remember as a child growing up around my grandmother and really enjoying the time we could spend together laughing, playing church, reading together, her getting me my favorite hot dog from the hot dog stand, just little things that were really special to me. But then I moved away by the time I was about seven or eight and I didn't have that close bond that we used to have. And my grandmother used to write me letters and I can remember receiving those letters in the mail and how it just changed my entire attitude to my entire world was changed as a result of hearing these love notes and she would put simple things in them like are you still reading you're such a great reader are you writing you're such a great writer all of these things that was helping to build me up and I would take these letters and, and, and store them away and just think about them and it stayed with me and I know today that letter writing has almost become a lost art so I wanted to be able to though replicate that feeling with my own children by leaving them love notes so love notes are, are a kind of personalized way that you can and your family can get involved in writing little messages to your children to just encourage them to remind them of who they are point out something that they may not have seen maybe it was something that they did not do well the day before but you notice them working on it and uh, you want to just let them know that so that they can keep working on it the sky is the limit to what these love notes can do but you will just see your children come to life um, and just receiving it you can write letters to students as well something I did at the beginning of the year. Every child got a letter from me, um, just letting them know how excited and how special they are to me and just being able to have the privilege to serve them in a classroom. An example of how you can use love notes. My daughter was very much in love with cupcakes. So we used the cupcake theme and I would write something on the cupcake. For example, you have a God-sized heart like your daddy. And I would put it on her door at night once she was asleep. And in the morning, she would wake up and find this letter to her. My son's theme was Cookie Monster. So we did the same thing for him. Um, so you can see here, thank you for sharing your toys, cleaning the playroom and helping mommy. So again, it could be something from the day before just to remind him that I see you, I see what you're doing I see you're growing in a certain area and to lift that up and to applaud it so what is one of the confidence building activities that you saw in this video that you could see yourself using with your student let us know in the comment section below please be sure to like share with someone who could use this in their home in their school in some aspect of their lives be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so that you can receive all future videos and updates we certainly thank you for watching have a blessed day that all the world may believe that I'm the way, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the truth, I'm the light, I'm the light, I'm the proof, I'm the proof, I'm the vine, I'm the vine, I've chosen you, I've chosen you.